In this episode of Coding Adventures, we're going to implement valid parentheses from LeetCode. So let's get started! If we read here the text of the problem, it's also an easy problem. It says that we're going to receive a string of characters made out only of these brackets, like three types of brackets and we need to determine if the string is valid and there are some rules basically mostly saying that open brackets might be must be closed by the same type of brackets so let's look at a few examples for instance if this is the string that we receive because it's open close this is a valid string the same with this one it's open round parentheses open close round parentheses open square parentheses and close square, uh, open curly braces, close square brackets. So this looks valid. Uh, this one, they say it's invalid because we are opening one type of parentheses, but we are closing a different one. So we need basically to write a function exactly like um, they provided here the prototype. And we need to determine if basically this string is valid. So let's switch a little bit to the whiteboard <laughs> or to the notebook and write um, Let's try to figure out a solution. So let's take, perhaps let's take a different type of string. One that wasn't provided in the exercise, in the examples there. I'm wondering if this is a valid string. According to the description should be, because we are opening a round one, then opening a square one, but when we are closing them, they match exactly. These two match, and then these two match. So, <laughs> so let's see how we take this problem. So. We obviously have here four characters and we take them one by one like this. So the way we're going to implement it is the following. I'm thinking to create a stack structure, which is basically, let's name this one. It's a it's type of a structure where basically, um, let's say if we add a number here or a second number, it looks like a stack, like you put numbers on the bottom, but in the moment you put them, they stack one on top of the other, but in the moment you remove them, you remove the one from the uh, top. So it's basically last in, first out type structure. And we're gonna do it in this way. If each time we're gonna find a round parenthesis here, uh, we're just gonna push it to the stack. Each time we're gonna find or uh, each time we're going to find an open parenthesis, we're going to push it to the stack. So let's say we found an open round bracket, we push it to the stack. We found the next one, a uh, um, square one, we push it to the stack. But in the moment we found a closed one, this one, we won't push it on the stack. In the moment we found a closed one, what we are doing, we are removing the last one from the stack and we are comparing them. And if they match, it's fine. <laughs> they uh, it, it, we are in a good case and then of course the stack will be uh, freed here this element and then we found the other one and we are looking what's left on the stack oh it's an open round parenthesis okay it matches with this one so this string looks valid so let's see how we implement this one uh, in the code like we said uh, we're gonna implement it, uh, this kind of a stack which is very 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 easily in javascript can be implemented with an array basically an array has this kind of um, ability to push and pop elements into it but before let me arrange this code um in the in <laughs> in a different way that it's more um it's easier to read for code newbies so all right so we have the function is valid and we are receiving one of these strings as argument let me put one of these strings exactly this one so we are receiving uh, yeah this string as an argument it's a string we'll put it between codes and we need to determine if this uh, string is valid or no so let's have a stack here inside in, inside which is like an empty array we can simulate a stack with an empty array and then let's iterate through all the characters of string s so see it's a character in this moment and we say if c basically if we said if c equal to open parentheses well what we have to do is to push it so stack dot push we push the character and as a matter of fact we're gonna do the same so let me copy this one really quickly also if it's a 
round if it's a square and if it's a round if it's a square and if it's a curly one okay so we are pushing it and now what will happen so after this let's put an else if actually <laughs> else if <clears throat> so if we are on this branch here else it means that the character is not one of these ones so it can be totally different characters or it can be cur closed brackets but i think in the problem here just to keep it simple they say that uh the string contains only this uh, yeah the string contains only this kind of symbol so we should be fine we don't have to test for extra symbols and extra cases because it's a simple problem but in a more complex one probably we'll have to check it so right now we have to check the other one in the in this point on the else statement here we know for sure that it's either one of these symbols but which one it is so um at this moment we'll have to pop the last character from the stack and basically if it's a put again the logic if uh, the current character it's a close parenthesis and the one that we popped from the stack it's an open one then we are in good shape it will be a lot of ifs hmm let me think all right let's do something like this all right rather than pushing on the stack the the, the, the actual parenthesis let's push on the stack what we should expect so i'm just putting the complementary of the parenthesis the complementary parenthesis in a sense so this is the open one this is the closed one so this is the curly okay let me take back the notebook and show you that these optimizations will help us a little bit to avoid just the extra ifs all right so the first case let's draw again the stack so we encounter the first parenthesis here what we are putting on the stack we are putting this one we are encountering the next open one what we are putting we are putting the closed one now we encounter a closed one and now the pointer is here of course <clears throat> now we encounter a closed one well this will be very easy we just have to check if whatever closed one we encounter if it matches the stack and then we count if we we take this one we just have to check if it matches we don't have to verify which is the complement again so we're gonna avoid all a bunch of ifs again <laughs> so let's write it this way so we're gonna else we have to pop it out from the stack or we can do it in a single statement if basically if the current character it's equal to the stack dot pop or let's say if it's different than the, the, the one from the stack, here we return false. All right, so the string is not valid. Otherwise, if we just finish, finish everything, we return true. So if we check all the characters of the string and all they are matching perfectly, we return true. Or it's much better to return to check the stack length stack length if it's zero uh, why just in case let's say somebody provides us with a string something like this it's open open parenthesis but no close parenthesis well in that case we're just gonna place this one on the stack so is this string valid obviously it's not valid because it doesn't have a um, close parenthesis but all this co will be just a lot of pushes on the stack this branch won't happen so basically we have to check here at the end if the stack is empty so the only way in which the string is valid is if we don't go out on this one so basically we don't encounter on a stack an unexpected character and if at the end of all the iterations the stack is empty so let's try this code and see if we are correct let me zoom out a little bit and run the code all right <laughs> our solution is accepted and it's actually a pretty simple one um i'm not sure if we can do it much better perhaps um a little bit better would be to and perhaps we can use a map again just to in case there are multiple symbols here uh not only these uh, three symbols so in our case we're three um 
maybe it's much easier if we just have some sort of a lookup structure, some sort of a dictionary, and we can check those. So let's implement also that kind of, uh, let's have also that kind of implementation, right? So let's copy it again, is valid, and let's start with a map. Now, we're going to provide the same get implementation, but in this particular case, there is no advantage in performance. We just want to provide the different implementation. All right, so, <laughs> so it's a new map. And I think I saw this kind of implementation some time ago, uh, <laughs> and I, I found it pretty clever. So uh, I'm going to try to create a similar implementation like this one. So let's put in the map, first of all, the symbols. And what we're going to put in the map, we're going to put as a key, the opening parenthesis and as a value, we're going to put what we expect for that parenthesis. So the complementary one. All right. And then from this point, the algorithm is similar. We're going to scan uh, the entire array. And uh, if uh, we're going to check if the character that we encounter inside the string is a key inside the dictionary. So basically it's on the first column here. Um, the map has a special property to check uh, if a value is a key basically. Then we're gonna push into the, like we said, we're gonna push into the uh, dictionary, the complementary. So we're gonna push this one. So uh, basically the same implementation as below. So let's have a stack like this one. Then we scan the entire string, each character we scan each character in the string, like we said, and now we're gonna check the map. If, and to check if basically, if the character is on the first column or is a key, we can check, we can say map has. So if map has this C, uh, we can put a comment here, C is a key in the map structure. So what we are doing if it has, uh, obviously we're gonna push it exactly like here on the stack, but see what we are trying to do is to avoid all these, the other ifs. So if it's a key inside this one, let's push it. Stack, ah, oh, stack that push, we are pushing the character. And actually let's do it like here, not push the character, but actually push the expected uh, closing character. So that will be, uh, we'll have to obtain the value for the C, which is basically instead of C, it will be a map get of C. <laughs> parenthesis in parenthesis. If you're not comfortable with this, we can put basically inside the block and we can read uh, this one, the value, and then we are pushing the value in a separate line. But I think we are fine uh, with one line here. So at this point, uh, if it's not a key, it must be a value, what we are encountering when we are scanning the string, right? So we can have an else if here. So else if, uh, we, we are doing the same logic here. We're gonna compare the stack, the character with the character that we are retrieving from the stack. And if they are different, we return a false. So if C is different than map, uh, stack.pop, we are returning false, like here. It's exactly the same logic like we did before. And if not, we are just returning, and let me copy again this line or say return. If we finish scanning all the string and if there are no element return remained on the stack, stack.length is zero. So this gets evaluated to true if there are no, no more elements on the stack and we should be in good shape, should return true, basically the string being valid. So uh, <laughs> it's the same algorithm as before, but we just avoided two more, uh, two extra ifs by keeping this in a dictionary. So we, we switch it from code to a data structure kind of implementation. So uh, let's try to run it. All right, and the solution is accepted again. Uh, we have here both our solutions. Let me uh, minimize them. All right, the original one, which is also pretty small, um, and the second one. But as I said, uh, I, I saw this one some time ago and uh, it, it looked, uh, you know, <laughs> I want, just wanted to present it to you. All right, so uh, this concludes the, today's episode. And until next time, happy coding and uh, see you next time.